Well, good morning. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to worship. Welcome to Salem. My name is Zach Southall, and I'm the Director of Worship Arts here at Salem Church and School. And I am so excited to be here worshiping with you today. Today is a very important today. Day Today is Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week, the most important week of the year for Christians. Uh, today is the last Sunday in Lent and the last Sunday before Easter. Palm Sunday marks the beginning of Christ Jesus' journey to the cross. Uh, the Bible describes Jesus riding into Jerusalem on Passover, for Passover on a young donkey, and being greeted by huge crowds who were waving palm branches and shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The people even uh, put their uh, coats and palm branches on the ground as Jesus passed by. Today is a really, really, really important day. So with this in mind, let us begin our service in prayer. Please bow your heads with me. Let's pray together. Merciful God, as we enter Holy Week, turn our hearts, turn our hearts again to Jerusalem and to the life, death, and resurrection of our Savior. Stir up within us the gift of faith that we may not only praise him with our lips, but also follow him in the way of the cross. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son and paving the way for our lives to be set free through Jesus' death on the cross. Thank you for what this day stands for, for the beginning of Holy Week, the start of the journey towards the cross and the victory of the resurrection. Lord, let our worship this morning reflect, reflect the importance of the day. Let our singing and our praise be pleasing to your ears. We pray all of this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We begin our service today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let's sing together. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. It's when we see find strength to face the day in your presence all our fears are washed away washed away
see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. Let's sing that together. Because when we see you, we find strength to face the day.
his time, in his time. He makes all things beautiful in his time. Lord, please show me every day as you're teaching me your way that you do just what you say in your time. Uh, weren't they fantastic? All our wonderful first and second graders are wonderful. They're so great. So good. All right, before we, re we, re we release all these fantastic singers out to you guys, we're going to go ahead and dismiss Sunday school first. Let them go while we still have you guys up here. So if you're going to Sunday school, please meet at that door over there right now. And then right after everybody gets out for Sunday school, then we'll go ahead and have one more one more gigantic round of applause for our first and second graders. What a wonderful job they did. And the palms, that was fantastic, fantastic. All right, and then, and now we will go ahead and release your children to you. And, uh, and why don't we, at the same time we're releasing them, let's go ahead and greet one another this morning, wherever you're at. You know, if you want to stand up and, and stretch out and just say hello to the person next to you, and uh, God's peace, you know. God's peace be to you, my brothers and sisters.
All right. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Salem. It's great to be with you. Thank you so much for greeting your, your friends and neighbors around you. I invite you to find your seats as we continue in worship with just a few announcements. My name is Adam Doherty. I'm Salem's Director of Christian Education. Like I said, it's wonderful to be with you this morning. If you're a guest with us, we would love to connect with you um, and pray for you. So if you need prayer, there's two easy ways that you can get prayer. The first one is obvious. Come talk to one of our, our church staff members or a pastor after church. We would love to pray for you right here, right now. Um, if you have things in your life that you want prayer for, but maybe you don't want to pray in person, or you um, want it to be a little bit more uh, discreet, then you can actually do something really easy, which is fill out the connection card in your bulletin that you got at the door from one of our ushers. If you fill out that connection card, we will follow up with you throughout the week, uh, connect with you about your prayer requests. We can even add you to our prayer list so that our prayer team can be praying for you. If you would like to connect with us in a different way, maybe you're looking to get involved, maybe you're looking for more information about our church, anything like that, do that through that connection card, um, and we'll be able to follow up with you. Again, you can drop that in the offering as it comes around, or give it to an usher on your way out. As Zach said this morning, today is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday in the church is the day Jesus rode into Jerusalem and was hailed as a king. But not a king who would come to rule uh, with, with strength and military might. A king who would come to lay down his crown for his people. And he laid that crown down when he went to the cross and died for our sins. This is the beginning of Holy Week. Uh, and in the church, that includes Monday, Thursday, where we celebrate Jesus' Last Supper. Good Friday, where we celebrate um, and, and remember the day that Jesus went to the cross and died for our sins. And then, of course, Easter Sunday, the day where we know that Jesus rose again. We would love for you to join us for one of our Holy Week services here at Salem. If you don't have a place to go, we would love for Salem to be the place that you go this Holy Week. We have a Monday, Thursday service at 7 p.m. in our chapel right over there. This service is really special. It's a little bit more of a traditional feel, um, but it's going to be a chance for you to uh, take Holy Communion, a chance for you to have sort of a solemn, quiet, peaceful um, service. So that's going to be in our chapel on this Thursday at 7 p.m. Good Friday service is in here in our worship center at 7 p.m. again. So 7 p.m. on Thursday in the chapel 7 p.m. for Good Friday right here in the worship center. And we're going to be walking through the passion story in that service. It's a much more solemn experience. A lot of times people wear black and we actually leave in silence. It's an incredible experience. And then all of that is leading up to our Easter services coming up in one week. Easter is one week away. We have services. First one is at 8.30. That's going to be in our chapel. If you're somebody, maybe you grew up with a traditional Easter experience... That's the service for you, 8.30 a.m. in our chapel, more of a traditional feel. On top of that, right here in our worship center, we will have 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. services right here in our worship center for more of a contemporary, modern feel. We would love for you to be a part of any of those services, especially because we have a very, very fun Easter egg hunt that's going to be happening. Lots of activities for the kids right out on our field after the 10.30 service here in uh, our worship center. So again, join us for any of those Holy Week services. We would love for you to be here at Salem with us as a family. As we continue in worship today, uh, I would love to pray for us. So if you would uh, bow your heads and pray with me as we continue in worship. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for bringing us together in remembrance of this amazing day, this Palm Sunday. We hail you as King. Lord, not just a King who would come to rule and dominate, but a king who came to give himself up for his people. Lord, we, we recognize today that that's different. We say Hosanna. We praise you as king. We thank you for what you've done. We ask you to continue to lead us in this worship service as we turn our hearts and our minds over to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we're going to go ahead and collect our gifts and offerings. You can make an offering through our website at Salem Orange if you're watching online like I know many are. Um, under resources, there's a page for online giving. Or if you're here with us today, you can simply scan the QR code that they're going to put behind me in a moment. 
above my head. Or if you've already automated your tithes, you can just sit back and relax. Um, thank you. Thank you once again for your, your fantastic generosity to this church. I'm going to pray just a, a short prayer over our gifts and offerings, if you would pray with me once more. Lord Jesus, thank you that you have plans for me that are for my good and your glory. You said give and it will be given to you for in the same measure, from the same measure as you give, it will be given to you again. We give to you today as a response to your goodness to us. We ask that you receive our offerings and continue to supply all our needs. May your peace be in our hearts, your grace be in our words, and your love be in our hands and feet as we go to serve one another. And Lord, let your joy be in our souls. It's in your mighty name we pray. Amen.
You may be seated. You may be seated. Yeah, give it up for the Lord. And now, let us come together now for a moment of confession. Imagine, imagine Jesus entering our presence right now, just as he entered Jerusalem some 2,000 years ago. Envision the palm branches, the donkey, the shouts of Hosanna that we just sang, understanding who he is and knowing who we are. Our, pray of, our prayer of confession today is a call and response. The people's response will be, we confess to you now the sins that weigh upon our hearts. We confess to you now the sins that weigh upon our hearts. Let's pray together. Oh God, you know us well. We are quick to speak of faith, but slow to live it fully. We shout Hosanna as Jesus approaches as did the people of Jerusalem many years ago. But we do not want him to come too close, not close enough to really see. We confess to you now the sins that weigh upon our heart. Oh God, you know us well. We are quick, quick to claim faith in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, but like the throng who greeted his entry into Jerusalem, we are fickle, slow to live fully, and everywhere as faithful disciples. We know where we fail. We confess to you now the sins that weigh upon our hearts. Oh God, you know us well. We are quick to want the blessings of faithfulness, but like the 12 who spent the last week with him, we are slow to accept the pain and the suffering of authentic Christ-like living. Forgive us for our weakness and our fear. We confess to you now the sins that weigh upon our hearts. The Lord is God. The Lord brings light to those in darkness, forgiveness to those who truly confess, and pardon to all who seek to follow Jesus. Rejoice that the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever and ever. In the name of Jesus the Christ, receive the love that never dies and never fails. Amen.
who died and rose again. Behold the Lamb of God who comes to take away our sin. We just went to God and we said, God, I'm sorry. And God says, I died on the cross for you. I forgive you. And it is God's words that I am sharing with you today, that your sins are forgiven. And as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, these are words that I say to you that you can say to your husband and wife, children and parents and one another. You are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Love that. Well, let me just tell you, today we're going to be taking a look over the next few minutes about parades because today is Palm Sunday. And at parades, I love to clap. And so I want to clap for our first and second grade students and the teachers and Mrs. Bush and everyone uh, who is up here uh, leading us in song. So let's give a God a thank offering for that. <laughs> Amen. Well, I just mentioned parades, and today is Palm Sunday, and I don't know if uh, you have any background with Palm Sunday, but it's in the church where Christ enters during Holy Week. And as Adam shared with us, this week is the biggest week for Christians around the world, but it started today on Palm Sunday, Passion Week. I'm Pastor Frick, and it's a joy to be here with you on behalf of Salem as we take a look just for a few minutes until we get the, the wiggles uh, start going uh, here today. Parades. I don't know how many of you like parades. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but love parades. We have a New Year's Day parade up in Pasadena, and if you've ever been there, what a great time it is. Our OPA, Orange Park Acres Parade, that happens in, on July 4th. Uh, May Day Parade in the city of Orange that has been reconstituted. I remember back in the day when I was a kid sitting on the curb and watching them go by. Macy's Day Parade. And so many different parades that go on. And maybe for some of us, uh, you remember back when Barnum and Bailey the circus came to town and you'd go down and watch the animals and clowns and performers get off of the train and go to wherever they were going to set up their circus. Some of us might not have been involved in a parade that we can think of. Although, if you've been married, you've been part of a parade down the center aisle of a church or a destination where you gathered together to be able to be blessed. Parades. They're wonderful times. And yet we also have different parades in our own lives. Not every day is a joyful clapping parade. We also have parades, and I don't know about you, but there are parades that go on in my mind that keep me awake at night or wake me up in the middle of the night or constantly cycle through my life during the day. And there's fear and there's Anger and rage and shame and pain and jealousy and control and worries about life that happen. 
And there are times that I shout out to God, Hosanna, save me. Save us, O God. That leads us into the text that we're going to take a look at. It's going to be up on the screen today. This is the main verse that we'll come back to. But up on the screen, in case you're following along, John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19, starts off the Holy Week. And what's interesting, that verse, that section, is also the first Sunday of Advent, back in the Christmas season. So we have it at Christmas and in Easter time, this section declaring Christ is the King. And so, John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19, and, I, and when we hit the Hosannas, I'm going to pause. I'm going to ask you to join me in saying that together. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, let's say that together, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. All right, I'm sorry, I flubbed that section. Let's do that again, shall we? Just like the people back 2,000 years ago. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Thank you. Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Today is the start of Holy Week. It's Palm Sunday or also known as Passion Sunday. And through this week, it is a time where we remember and honor what God has done. Now, some historical background of this. By the way, I mentioned parades. I'm going to give you an even better parade. Two of them. I love the parade in the Old Testament where the people of Israel went around Jericho as God's, as God's might and power came about. And even before that, this Passover that Jesus is coming into the city for, when 600,000 fighting men from Israel, not including women, moms, grandpas, children, came out of Egypt. And during Jesus' time, Jerusalem swelled from an average population of about 100,000 people, 100,000 people, to two, two and a half three million people. In fact, Josephus in 65 AD said that there were 2.7 million people that were there. And Jesus, just 30 years earlier, where the Talmud and Josephus and others talked about how many were in Jerusalem. That's a lot of people. And if you've ever been over to Jerusalem, across from Jerusalem, the Temple Mount, there's a place called Mount of Olives. And right now it's a big cemetery, but as you go down, if you come up and over from Bethany and then go down the Mount of Olives, you come to the Kidron Valley. And the Kidron Valley was a place, deep valleys. And then Jesus climbed back up, ascended into Jerusalem. And the people were lining the streets. Historically, if we haven't been to a parade like that, what does it mean for us? Well, one, it's a different kind of king because Jesus rode on a donkey. He didn't ride in a chariot. He didn't ride in a tank. He didn't ride on a warrior steed. He didn't fly in on a helicopter or Air Force One. He rode on a donkey. Humble, gentle, 
peaceful. And that's the message that God gives for us, that he's already going to do the work. But as a king, he's already conquered death. And as we get older in age, as we deal with diseases and death, and different things that go on in our bodies, God says, I've already got you covered. I'm the God of peace. And while you've got to deal with this, this side of heaven, I've already won the battle. I am victorious. Trust in me. And that's the message that God gives to us on this Palm Sunday is that he had victory over all the things that I said earlier that keep us awake at night and go through our mind. We're still going to deal with them, but we give them over to God and say, Hosanna, God save us, we pray. God, you've got this covered. You know what's going on. And God says, yep, I took care of it. So what does that mean for us? As we take a look at Palm Sunday, we realize that God himself, Jesus, is the king who rides a donkey in peace because he's already won the victory. But what else does the text say? Verse 17, now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. I want to be part of that crowd. I want to be like that donkey. I want to help spread the word about Christ's grace and goodness and forgiveness and mercy. Whether it's in my heart, whether it's in my home, whether it's those around me. God is my king. There's a lot of things that distract us in the world today politics, finances, daily living, all the stuff that occupies our time. But ultimately, I want to come back and say, Lord, you are the king of my life. And that's where my attention goes to. This week, Maybe you need a reminder of that. This section, Daughter of Zion. Do not be afraid, Daughter of Zion. Comes out of what's called the Hallel Psalms. Praise Psalms. And maybe you're looking for something to kind of journey with you this week. You might want to start reading Psalm 113 to 118. Those are the Hallel Psalms that as people were coming up to Jerusalem, they would be saying. At Passover, they would be saying. In the temple, they would be saying. It's like our praise songs that's singing. So maybe each day you want to take a different psalm, Psalm 113 to 118. And you want to praise God and say, help us, we pray. Hosanna, but let you be our hallelujah. Or maybe you want to see the Easter story laid out, and so you want to read Mark 11 in the New Testament in the Gospels. Mark 11 through 15 this week. Take a different chapter each day and just read through that. Next Sunday, we're going to take a look at Mark 16, the proclamation and celebration of Resurrection Sunday. But this week, maybe that's something you can do. Or... Maybe you want to take this cross with you. And if you didn't get a cross, we've got crosses at the doors. And on one side of the cross, maybe write with a pen, a Sharpie or a ballpoint pen, the things that God can save you from, the things that are on your mind and on your heart, the things that you're saying, God, save us, we pray. Maybe that's things on one side. And just write it down and put it in your Bible, in your book. Keep it with you as you commute. Hold on to that. But on the other side, what are the hallelujahs? What are the thanks 
that you were saying, God, I thank you for. And you can say your husband, your wife, your children, your parents. You can talk about Salem and the amazing things. You can talk about whatever, but whatever brings your hallelujahs out. One side, Hosanna, God save us. The other side, hallelujah. And hold this cross with you this week. It's not a talisman. It's not superstitious. It just focuses our attention where we need to focus in this mad, 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 crazy world. Christ on the cross who gave his all for us. Or maybe, maybe you think about those under your roof like a parade. When your wife comes home, when your wife comes home, the mother of your children, do applause and give thanks. Do you share your hallelujahs with her? And the same for your husband. Do you take the time to be able to say, thank you, Hosanna, God save us, and hallelujah. Do you take time to be able to share your hosannas and hallelujahs with your family? First and second graders, are you loving mom and dad? Yeah. Do they know it? Hopefully they do. Maybe this week, today, you can drive them crazy. <laughs> By every time they walk in the room, every time you see them, you say, Hosanna! Let's try that together. Hosanna! Hosanna! And next Sunday, we're going to repeat that with Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Because God's already done it. God's already done the work and he's covered us with his grace and forgiveness and mercy and life and love. Today it's Palm Sunday. It's Passion Week. And the glory of Christ will be on the cross on Good Friday. So let us remember that with our hosannas. God save us, we pray as we walk and journey to the alleluias of life in Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 I invite our praise band to come forward at this time. I invite the rest of us to stand up as we continue and receive the blessing of God. And while they're making their way up here, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's bright, smiling face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his peace and as he gives you his grace each and every day. Amen? Amen. 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 Hosanna! Hosanna! God bless you each and every day. Amen. All right, we're going to close singing a song called Lion and the Lamb. Uh, this song, it's referring to the two aspects of the nature of Jesus Christ. You know, the one we've heard a lot about today, the humble, the, the lamb. But it's, it, we must not forget that he's both the, the, the lamb, the perfect, the ultimate sacrifice for our sin, coming on Good Friday, um, as well as the conquering lion of Judah, right? The conqueror, the king of all kings, our risen savior coming on Easter. Let's sing together. sins
gigantic egg hunt as well, kiddos. All right, love you guys. Go out filled with this peace.